today, let's discuss the haunting holiday of Halloween and the first ever special edition of Alternative Jargon. Welcome to the show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Alternative Jargon episode number 24. Welcome to the first ever special edition of Alternative Jargon. I hope everybody out there has a great Halloween. I hope you have a great costume planned, whether it be scary or funny or a group costume. I'm so excited for this. I have always wanted to do a special edition of Alternative Jargon. Here we are. Had to take a few weeks off to plan this one. Had to put some work in. Had to uh, make a a special new logo just for this. I really always have wanted to get into the holiday spirit with an episode, and here we are. Um, If you're listening to this on Spotify or Apple, I highly recommend that you view this episode on YouTube. Brew up some popcorn, brew up a witch's potion, sit back, relax. We're going to have a good time. Hopefully, um... Nothing too scary will happen. The set right now in the uh, official studio, it's a little bit creepy. I'm a little bit scared. The, uh, the power went out, so I'm having to use a candle and a, uh, a cheap spotlight that runs on battery power from Target to light this episode. A little bit spooky. It's very ironic that this happened right whenever I'm filming the Halloween episode. But, you know, maybe that's just a sign that we truly are in the midst of scary season, okay? You know, I think it's very interesting how big Halloween uh, has gotten these days. Obviously, I know that Halloween's been celebrated for hundreds of years now, originating up in Ireland. I know that. Look, I know. But I really feel like over the past, I don't know, 50 years or so, it's really exploded even more. Um, I think maybe this could be due to an increase in popularity of horror movies over that time and just scary media in general. If you think about it, the horror genre was not really around prominently until about the past 100 years or so. Now, I don't even mean just, like, movies. I mean, like, books and everything, right? The horror genre was sort of originated in, like, the 19th century. That's when, you know, the Frankenstein book came out, the Dracula book came out, which I'm actually in the middle of reading right now uh, to get myself even more in the mood for this time of year. Um, But, you know... Horror movies have only been around for about 100 years. In fact, the first horror movie really came out uh, in, like, the early 1920s. So we're right at about the uh, centennial mark for horror movies, you know. And honestly, I think there's a big portion of our population that might even say that Halloween is their favorite holiday. Even putting it over things like Christmas, um... You know, it's it's up there with the most popular holidays. And maybe this could be because... Maybe it's because of nostalgia as well. Um, I feel like dressing up used to just be for little kids, but now it's kind of socially acceptable for anyone to do it. Me personally, I think when you hit the age of maybe... I don't know. It depends if you have kids or not. If you have kids then you can dress up until the day you die. But I think if you don't have kids, unless, you're, unless you don't have kids or unless you're not an NBA player walking into the arena, then I don't think you have an excuse to dress up after the age of about 30. If you have kids, then of course you can do it. But that's just my personal take. I think if you're over the age of 30 and you're still dressing up just to dress up, Maybe rethink it. I don't know. I don't want to be judgmental. But at that point, you might just want to go to Comic-Con, right? 
I don't know. But, you know, I think deep down everyone likes spooky things a little bit. And, you know, Halloween is the perfect excuse to invite those spooky things in and to celebrate them a little bit, right? It's an excuse to watch something scary, to get a rush of adrenaline, and to pretend to be someone you're not for a day. And the psychology of that sort of puzzles me. Like, why do we like that stuff? Obviously, people enjoy uh, scary movies for the rush. Um, So, but yeah, I mean, I think maybe, hey, we live pretty easy lives right now in comparison to our ancestors. And a lot of the things that scared them no longer scare us because we have so much technology that's made our life easier. So, hey, we need a little bit of scare in our lives now and then just to remember that we can get scared. So now I mentioned uh, a couple of episodes ago that I think every politician, every member of Congress should dress up for Halloween in a NASCAR jumpsuit that has all of their lobbying support on them as the sponsors. Let's find out where the money comes from. And, you know, if you're a politician, you get to pretend to be someone you're not 365 days a year. If you're a regular person, you only get to do that once on October 31st. These people get to do it year round. So maybe politicians just really love Halloween because they love to pretend. But I did say about the NASCAR jumpsuits and um, look, today I... I'm actually going to follow up with that. I am going to write a letter live on the air right now to uh, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. I'm shipping this to Joe Biden, and I am not joking about this, to try to sway him to pass an executive order to uh, require every member of uh, Congress to do the NASCAR jumpsuit with all of their... Um, lobbyists as the sponsors. So let's go ahead and type this out. And I'm not kidding. I'm going to type this out. I'm going to read it out loud. And I will, sh- I will be shipping it to the White House. And I will post proof of that on my Instagram for the podcast. So if you're not following the Instagram, go follow the Instagram. But let's type this out, guys. Let's get to it. Sorry about that loud noise. Right. I'll do all the addressing later, but for now I'm just going to type out the body of this. Uh, dear Mr. Biden, I know they call you Sleepy Joe, but today I write to tell you that I hope you're feeling energized this Halloween. The reason I want you to be energized is because I need your help. I have always thought that it would be so fun for there to be a Halloween party in Congress. I'm asking you nicely to pass an executive order to require all 400 something members to dress up every year on the 31st and hold a session of Congress in their costumes. Let me know what you think. Sincerely, Mr. David Ronan, Alternative Jargon Enterprises, P.S. 
this is where things get spicy. I also want you to know that the costumes should be NASCAR racing jump suits, but instead of sponsors, make the Congress men slash women um, put their lobbyists information on them as the sponsors. Let's find out where that money is coming from. We already know where it's going to. Uh, wink, wink, Ukraine. But I'd love to know the source. The best an independent voter with an open mind for 2024. Ladies and gentlemen, that's how it's done. That's how you get things going in Washington. Okay. Like I said, I will actually be posting proof of me mailing this. I'm going to buy a stamp. I'm going to put it in the mail. I'm going to put the little red flag up and it's going to be there. Okay. I'm doing it now so that Joe has the next 365 days to think about it and to make action on it. Okay. So if you don't believe me, go follow Alternative Jargon on Instagram. I will have that in the mail very soon. And keep yapping, man. Joe, what did I say about knocking? Anyway, look, it's going to take a little bit of a um, little bit of persuasion. He he doesn't have the most open mind at times, but sorry about that little interruption there. Now, I'd like to dive a little bit further into why we like to celebrate Halloween so much. You know, I as well as many others enjoy this time of year a lot. It's always fun. The leaves change color, the air gets cooler, and we binge watch our favorite serial killers, putting in the work on TV all day. Okay. But I always wonder, like, why do we like to watch or engage in things that are on paper scary and evil? Like I said before, I think it's nostalgia for one thing. I don't know why we like to be scared, but we do. Some more than others, but... Like, even as a kid, you love to sit around and watch Scooby-Doo. You love stuff like that. You love a little adre adrenaline rush when they take the mask off the guy in Scooby-Doo. And as a kid, I used to love to be scared. I would scare myself almost on a daily basis as a kid. Whether it was... Um, you know, a stupid Call of Duty Zombies video or top 10 natural disasters that could happen tomorrow on YouTube, okay? It was such a thrill to sit there and freak myself out. I would sit there and watch videos of fake tsunamis and giant asteroids hitting Earth. And then, you know, if I would hear a plane overhead outside, I would look up and think that it was all over. There is a uh, scene in 2012, the movie about the end of the world, where there's some monk standing in the Himalayas, and then he, you know, sees the giant tsunami come over the mountain, and he starts ringing his bell to let everyone know it's there. And as a kid, I would literally look at every mountain I saw and just expect to start to see water pour over the top of it. It was so dumb. It was so dumb, but that was me. So, and anyone who knows me in my family or my friends knows that if there is a campfire in front of me, I am like begging for a scary story. As a kid, I would go to family members' houses and we would have campfires and sit there and talk. And 
I would beg for us to tell scary stories. And when we finally did, I would be too afraid to go pee in a bush by myself. So that was the type of kid that I was. Um, and it's weird to... I can't even put a finger on why I enjoy getting scared. Because it's like, oh, I enjoy getting scared. I enjoy thinking about scary stuff. And then whenever me and my friends or me and my family would actually tell a scary story as a kid, then I would just be miserable because I was too freaked out to go anywhere without my parents with me, you know? So, very... I don't know the science behind it. And I'm too lazy to do the research. So, I'm not like... Sigmund Freud, I'm not going to sit here and write a textbook for this episode, but... No, another thing that I used to love as a kid were urban legends. Urban legends are so good because you don't know which ones are real and which ones are not. Some are more believable than others, but, you know, the old, uh, if you see a car without headlights on and you flash them, they'll pull a U-turn and follow you and kill you because it's a gang affiliation sign or something. You know, oh, is Bigfoot really lurking in the Pacific Northwest? The one that really used to get me as a kid was Bloody Mary. I don't know how this originated either, but me and like every other little kid I knew from the time that we were like four years old in preschool until like the end of elementary school, Bloody Mary had like a a strangling grip on our fears. I, I can think back to times literally in preschool. I was not even yet in kindergarten. In preschool, when you had free time and you and all your little buddies would sit around talking about Bloody Mary, and then one of the kids in the group had to go pee, and you'd say, okay, go by yourself, go to the bathroom with the mirror, I dare you to say it three times and spin around and she'll appear, right? Well, like, where did we even learn that stuff? I don't know, but man, it was so fun to sit around and talk about it. And then, of course, you sit around with all your other four-year-old pals talking about Bloody Mary. And then you're too scared to go to the bathroom by yourself. So then you have to ask one of your, one of your favorite daycare workers to accompany you. So... You know, I can, actually, I've still, to this day, I don't think I've done the whole Bloody Mary in the mirror thing. So maybe it still has a grip on me. But, you know, I think probably 99% of the urban legends are false. But they were so much fun, uh, you know, to discuss as a kid. And you know, it, it, let's, let's knock this one off the bucket list, all right? I don't, I'm not going to spin around because I don't feel like getting up. But uh, there is a mirror in my room over there. So I think that means that the portal's open for Bloody Mary, right? Is that how it works? So let's do this live on the air and see uh, if she appears, okay? So um, yeah, I guess let's just do it. Uh, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary. Nothing. So, I guess, you know, the rumors were uh, true. Anyway, uh, I don't know what that was, but, you know, this isn't the, uh, the newest building in the world. So it does make noise sometimes, so... But I'm sure that was nothing. But, um... The next thing I want to talk about is... And I'm sorry if I'm bouncing around between topics so much. I have an idea of what I want to talk about for the Halloween special. And none of them are really related. But we're just going to keep bouncing around like it's topics on Jeopardy. Do you guys remember the clown invasion in 2016? Do you remember that? Whenever I think back to trends that happened during Halloween, that might have been the best one we ever had. That one was so good. So good. 
I think it's interesting, too, that we still don't really know if it was legit or not. Those videos would be so easy to fake, and I'm willing to bet that, you know, 99% of them were definitely fake. But some of the videos did look realer than others, and a lot of them, like the clowns would be spotted by these people, and then they would sprint right at the camera, whether they were in a car or whatever but a lot of the clowns were wielding weapons and then they would sprint at the camera and most of the time you know the video stops right before they get there which signals to me it's probably fake or maybe their survival instinct kicked in and they realized life was more precious than likes on instagram whatever i don't know but either way it was entertaining. It was entertaining because it took over the world in the blink of an eye. And then, of course, you and all your friends are walking around at night in the month of October. And you're just expecting to see a clown. Now, I never did see one my, uh, with my own eyes. But there was a period when me and my buddies would walk around town at night in our tiny little uh, rural town as a freshman in high school, and we were out looking for clowns. So we were out hunting clowns. And if we found one, we all agreed to walk up and honk their nose. So, but no, it was like an everyday thing. You're sitting at the lunch table at school and then your buddy whips out his phone and says, hey guys, a new clown video dropped. And everyone would look at it. So it was really fun. And a lot of the, the quote unquote sightings were in like back roads, country roads. So, and I am from more of a rural area and I was a freshman in high school, like I said, when this was going down and I ran cross country and our cross country course like went through the woods and stuff. So every time at practice that me and my buddies would run the cross country course and uh, you know mess around because the coaches can't see you once you go in the woods we would uh, we'd be looking for clowns out in our cross country woods we'd be looking for clowns and those woods were fun because you really did never know what you were going to see a lot of groundhogs uh, like multiple families of deer in fact one time we were running at practice and a whole squadron of deer ran out of the woods onto the cross country path and ran like straight at me. I'm not kidding, this deer ran straight at me and I just like froze. I was like, yeah, I, I'm not gonna like, I can't stop a charging deer. Um, I had, I did think about breaking out like my Madden juke moves, but um, I just kind of stood there and waited to see what would happen. And the deer ran right at me and then swerved me at the last second. So literally there was a deer um, like a foot away from me at one point. So close enough that one of their deer ticks definitely could have hopped off of it and onto me. Luckily it didn't happen. But yeah, that was interesting. So you never know what you were going to see in those woods. So we were always thinking about the clown. But, you know, these days, if you want, um, if you want to, uh, if you want a clown sighting in the month of October, then just turn on cable news during the month of October during an election year, and you can see tons of clowns. So, I guess you could say we have a clown invasion every four years. Mm. New theory, but... Yeah. You know, one thing I was brainstorming about um, for this episode would be, like, the optimal place to spend Halloween for, quote-unquote, maximum spookiness. And I've settled on a castle in Transylvania. I know, stereotypical. But, come on, can you imagine how cool that would be to spend Halloween in Dracula's castle? Okay. That'd be the coolest Halloween party venue of all time. Now, unfortunately, I, I don't have the budget for that right now. I don't have the budget to record 
the alternative dark and Halloween special in a vampire castle, maybe next year. We will have to see just how good things go this next uh, calendar year. But for now, um, I just had to do it in my spooky college bedroom. So we work with what we got. But can you imagine spending Halloween in a dark and scary castle? That'd be so sick. I would have loved to do this podcast in, you know, the dungeons of a medieval castle, right? There's water leaking through the roof, okay? I would pay a pipe organist to just go at it all night to play through the whole episode. Um, I would pay the Rothschilds to make it rain in that region for the day because we all know that they control the weather, right? Um, And I would rent a uh, family of bats to just scurry about the castle while the podcast was being recorded. And then, after the podcast was done, I would invite all of my subscribers to the castle and we would have a freaking sick party. Can you imagine a giant Halloween party in a medieval castle? You couldn't top that. Now, I'm not sure that my 120 subscribers would really be able to, like, fill the castle all the way. It depends on the size. Okay, but I imagine Dracula's probably got, like, a pretty sweet crib. So 120 definitely wouldn't fill the place. I would need a bigger guest list. So, like I said before, maybe next year. Gain some more subscribers, send out all the invites, rent the uh, castle in Transylvania, and maybe next year we'll make that thing happen, right? So, you know, if the show gets big enough, heck, forget, we can cut part of the budget by forgetting the pipe organist, but if the show gets big enough, I will just learn to play the pipe organ, and that'll save a little bit of cash, because I'm sure renting a pipe organist would be a little pricey in today's economy thanks biden god um so yeah um maybe i'll just learn to play the pipe organ i can get like a plastic surgeon in the beverly hills to extend my canine teeth and look i'll start work on my eastern european accent tomorrow in preparation for next year let's make it happen Um, I'll just become Dracula. Then I won't have to, like, hire uh, an impersonator for that. I'll just become Dracula. Um, Can you imagine... Can you imagine a, uh, a giant medieval castle in the middle of the Transylvanian mountainside and there's just a giant alternative jargon logo, like, neon sign on the castle? Like, it looks so spooky. And then you see like a 300 foot tall jumbotron light up with the, uh, the AJ logo. That's the dream. In fact, that's the end game. The reason I started this podcast was to get there. So if you haven't already, uh, click that like button, click that subscribe button, click that follow button. And, um, Maybe I'll let, maybe I'll like let all of my subscribers rent out a room in the alternative jargon castle like once a year or something. We'll figure it out. Um, but yeah, man, I I don't know why, but there's something about Halloween parties that are like so much more fun than just regular old parties. Maybe it's because everyone's dressed up. Maybe it's because of the fun, spooky music that plays on Ox. Look, I don't know exactly, but I do know that... They're just more fun. Um, There's something comforting about a spooky Halloween party with your friends. It it just feels fuzzy and warm. You know, fuzzy and warm. So, yeah, I mean, it shouldn't feel fuzzy and warm because it's like, it's supposed to be like scary, you know? But, I don't know. Like I said, I think I feel like I've said this about 20 times in this episode already, but, you know, you just can't, like, put a finger on it. 
so I don't know, but um, all right, that's weird. Light has gone out. This thing's supposed to be battery powered. One second. Technical difficulties yet again. Uh, oh, there we go. It um, was not even like turned off, but anyway. <sighs> weird stuff, weird stuff. So, you know, speaking of the lights going out, that reminds me um, of the movie Lights Out. It's a movie that I watched with me and my buddies last year during Halloween. You know, it's just another one of those generic movies where a kid's haunted by an imaginary friend that turns out to be a dead person that the family knew before. Those are absolutely my least favorite types of scary movies. Okay, if I find out that there's a kid in a scary movie, I usually just won't watch it. I give up. If I'm scrolling through Netflix looking for a scary movie, and in the thumbnail there's a little kid... I check it off the list and say, I'm never watching that because we've seen all that BS before. It's so old. It's so overused. Um, can somebody out there in the film industry make a scary movie where something happens to an adult? Can an adult be haunted for once? The kid thing is so overused. It's so worn out. Okay. Um, I already wrote a letter in this episode to Joe Biden, but I might have to write a letter to the Federal Commun Communications Commission uh, to step in and pass an order stating you must be at least 18 to act in a horror movie. Enough with the kids, okay? Enough with the kids. It is the exact same story every time, okay? Oh, the family moves into a new house with their... Um, their little kid, he's four, and he's like, he's a nice, shy, quiet kid. He does so well in school. The teachers all love him. Okay. And then they find his coloring book, and oh, there's spooky drawings, and they ask him about it, and he says, hey, that's just my imaginary friend so-and-so. And they go, oh, you're so cute. You have an imaginary friend that appears to be a giant black shadow with murderous intentions in your Crayola book. Oh, that's so cute. That's so cute. Then the kid starts to act weird and he goes berserk. And then, you know, eventually they realize, hey, maybe his imaginary friend is like something else. And they step in and they find out it was Uncle Hank from 1877 who was cut out of the family will and they talk to Hank on a Ouija board and they get it worked out and it's a happy ending. And there's not like a, a single scary part in the entire movie. All right. It's so old. It's so old. I can't do it. I can't do it. I'd rather watch... I'd rather watch every generic slasher movie with every predictable jump scare a million times over before I ever watch another movie like that. Okay. Um, you know, that reminds me. The other day I was walking through my college campus and uh, some little kid like ran up to me and he handed me a drawing. Now I have the drawing here. Let me get it out uh, to show it to you real quick. you can see this on the screen but it's like a it's like a face or something but uh, yeah he just randomly ran up to me and I asked him can you see that So the kid ran up and he handed me this. He handed me this. And I was like, what, you, what is this? Who are you? The kid was by himself. And um, 
I asked him that, and then he just said, like, in, like, a... It was, like, kind of a too low of a pitched voice for a kid to have. He was like, he'll be here soon. And it was really weird. But, you know, hey, he stayed inside the lines pretty nicely. Um, but unfortunately, like, I don't know. This drawing isn't really, like, my cup of tea. It's not really my vibe. I don't know where to hang it. Um, and it's... I don't know, it's not really my thing. Like, I'm sorry, kid. But at least they recycle um, paper now. So. Is that, can you? Huh. I've never heard a wolf howl in this town, but hey, there's a first for everything. Um. But, uh, did you guys see that the, uh, the new Saw movie just came out? Um, look, I haven't seen any Saw movies since the first one. I feel like after the first one, they sort of just turn into an excuse to, you know, fake torture people on camera and sell tickets. But the first one was, like, an actual movie, like a really good movie. I still say that the original Saw movie has the best plot twist I've ever seen in a movie. And I'll stand by that. I have never been shocked like I was at the end of the first Saw movie. Um, I watched it at a seventh grade sleepover with me and my buddies, and at the end of the movie, I'm not going to spoil it, but at the end of the movie, our jaws were on the floor. It was insane. So if you have not seen the original Saw movie from 2004, Go watch it. It's so good. And if you're scared of all of, like, the gore in that series, which is the main reason I stay away from the others, uh, the first one's not too bad. It's, it's not, like... It pales in comparison to some of the really screwed-up stuff that's in the other ones. So go see it. It's a really good movie. Um, but one thing that's always disturbed me about the Saw movies as a series is that I always think, like, there's going to be somebody out there or multiple people out there that watch the Saw movies and then they try to recreate the traps themselves and use them on people and try to be like the Jigsaw killer. Okay, there's some sickos out there. There's some real sickos out there. And this series just gives them a whole notebook full of stuff to do, all right? A whole notebook. Actually, ten notebooks now. Ten movies. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone's ever actually uh, done a saw trap to someone in real life. I did look up, like, real-life saw trap, like, to look for news articles about it or something. And in my 30 seconds of research, I didn't see anything. So I'm going to assume that it hasn't happened. Um, you know what? That's kind of the effort I put into this show. If it doesn't pop up in 30 seconds, I assume it's not real. But, you know, if somebody wanted to make a saw trap for me and torture me, um, really, all they would have to do is trap me in a room for 24 hours with a monster energy in front of me and tell me I can't drink it. Right? It's not even like a scary looking room like the ones in Saw. It's clean. They have a nice big recliner for me, a TV with all the streaming services, you know, a PlayStation 4, my AirPods, my Spotify playlist, everything I would ever need. But they sit a monster energy on the table in front of me and say, you have to spend 24 hours in this room. You can't drink it. Now, that's not torture for 99% of the population, but as Bernie Sanders said, um, I am the top 1%, okay? I'm the 1%. That's torture for me. So, you know, all that Jigsaw has to do to torture me uh, and make me rethink my life is spend two fifty nine dollars at the local gas station, uh, and I'll be in a world of shit, <laughs> all right, frankly. I don't need to cut a hand off. I don't need to, like, get my eyeballs sucked out of my head. I don't need to kill, like, four of my coworkers with a shotgun carousel. 
No. Just tell me I can't drink a Monster Energy, the green one, the zero sugar one with the green top. And uh, yeah, cheapest saw trap of all time. I don't know what a lazy boy goes for today or a 65 inch plasma screen, but it's gotta be cheaper than some of that crazy stuff that Jigsaw's rigged up, right? His budget's kind of crazy. He's kind of got a big budget. But, you know, with that being said, even though it is the Halloween special, um, I like to keep my episodes short. I don't want a long podcast. I don't like long podcasts. I like bite-sized podcasts. So that's going to bring an end to the alternative jargon Halloween special. If you listen to this all the way through, listened or watched, whatever, uh, I absolutely love you. Thank you so much. Um, I've never put this much work into an episode or maybe into most things in my life uh, ever before. So, um, like I said, I've always wanted to make a special edition to at least have fun with it and to at least satisfy myself, you know? Um, I'm kind of a sucker for like special edition stuff. Whenever it's a special time of year and a brand comes out with a new logo and a new intro and special effects and junk like that. I'm a complete sucker for that stuff. So, and part of my, part of the reason I love doing this podcast so much is because it's like my own brand that I get to make all the decisions for. So when it comes to special edition crap like that, of course I want to do it. It's so much fun. Uh, But this has been episode 24 of Alternative Jark and really hope you enjoyed. And I really hope you have a happy Halloween. So thank you all for watching and we will see you next week to back to regularly scheduled programming. But uh, yeah, so happy Halloween. Thank you. Live or die. Make your choice.